Hey guys, welcome back to the Almost Friday podcast. Good to see you. It's been I've been out for a little bit. Whoa, <laughs> it's me and Gus. I forgot what he looked like. Not really. <laughs> that would be absurd. But it's good to see you. Hey, I'm going to be in Portland, Oregon this Sunday at the Helium in Portland uh, at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Sunday show. Next week I'm at uh, the Tempe Improv in Tempe, Arizona. Thursday, March 14th. It's a 7:30 show, and then St. Patrick's Day, baby. I'm going to be down in San Diego. Click the link in my bio, get some tickets. Uh, San Diego's gonna be a fun show. I got some, I got some rowdy boys coming with me. I got, I got Willie Simon and I got Alec Flynn, and it's gonna be a great, great time. I won't be there. I don't, I don't know. It's just not interesting to me. Yeah, it's cool. I just don't find like I get. I'm glad you got. I glad you have an audience. Oh, sorry. For sure, dude. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Those are those are the ones. Ah! I have those are the ones. I well, have I, li- I like razzing my little guy. <laughs> please come, please come see me. Okay, and please, and now let's pay for this podcast. Now let's pay for this podcast, guys. We're brought to you by Chubby's. Okay, elevate your golf game with Chubby's golf polos, crafted from bamboo charcoal fabric and ultimate comfort with our four-way stretch introducing the bunch of wolves collection by chubbies find your inner wolf and put some shorts on them at chubbies.com thank you to our sponsor game time thank you so much take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time okay download the game time app create an account and use code friday for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code f-r-i-d-a-y for 20 dollars off 20 dollars 20 dollars off guys we're brought to you by zocdoc a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Almost Friday and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Almost Friday. ZocDoc.com slash Almost Friday. ZocDoc. The ZocDoc. Let's get into the episode. <laughs> okay, the return of Liam Cullah. We have I'm Mr. Back. Mr. Jerry Kanaw. Kanaw. Kanaw is <sighs> here. To help smooth um, this transition. Resident, resident creative genius. <laughs> uh, wow. Local, local editor for hire. Um, That's true. We call we call him the architect because we basically hand him the we hand him the stone, we hand him the glass, and he builds this wonderful house for us. That you all get to tour through, and um, yeah, you get to be our little guests on our YouTube channel, and Jerry Jerry builds the house. So thank wow. you, Jerry. This That's is, just what guys, we say. You guys are so well spoken. This is the house Kanawha yeah? built, dude. Like go, go more on. Well, that. as I read Beowulf this week, and I was thinking because you guys talk like that a lot, and it always impresses me how you're able to create like w- like major worlds and like pictures with your with your words. Wow, Jerry Kanaw. <laughs> You're buttering my muffin, dude. You are. You already got a two or three year contract. Your your, your job's fine. You don't need Let's to butter go. my muffin. Okay, no, yeah, no. it's all good then. I'm um, acting like I'm on hold the whole episode. That's good. And no one knows for what. No, I'm just kidding. That's life, bro. So I I just found this on the table there. So that was just a fun bit. Um, Liam, you returned. Thank you guys. Thank Emily, you guys. say something nice to Liam. Liam, I really missed you. Thank you. Everyone missed you. All all the comments were about, where is Liam? I read the comments the last episode. Never really do that. Really funny shit. Yeah, someone said, someone, uh, there was one that really made me laugh. That was like, glad Liam's finally doing rehab or something like that. (laughs) There's a lot of good ones. Really tickled my tummy. There's a lot of good ones. Um, But yeah, there's a a Liam-sized hole in my heart. And uh, now it's filled. So Jerry tried to fill it. Didn't work. I I tried hard. He tried hard. We're sleeping in the same bed. You know, I, okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what were you gonna say? I don't know. I thought I thought you were about to move on, so I was gonna move on. I was gonna tell you about my flight back. Oh please! I was gonna talk more about Dune two. Let's talk. Can more we about finish Dune, Dune two Let's and then we'll talk th- about the flight? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Emily, write down Liam's flight so that when we um yeah you got it. All right, sweet. Thank you. Um, I cannot say enough good things about Dune two. Uh, we'll try to do no spoilers for the listeners. We'll keep it brief if you're not interested. Um, it is like. The leap that the leap that Batman begins made to the Dark Knight is the same leap I saw from Dune 1 to Dune 2. It is one of the best theater experiences I've ever had. Timothy Chalamet cemented himself as a legendary actor. Yes. Um the cast was incredible. Um I know Jerry Whoa. Jerry's not I'm not a Chalamet not guy. So, what? I, okay, I wasn't a huge Chalamet guy. I always understood he was a good actor, but like this 
Dude, he had range in this. I came into this a big Chalamet guy and walked out of it a huge Chalamet man. Massive Chalamet man. I don't buy him. Dude, I bought Austin Butler as that guy. I don't buy Chalamet. I need my leading man bench in 135, and I know Chalamet's not putting those numbers (laughs) up. I don't know, dude. You're Austin Butler over Jacob Elordi. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. I did not say that, but the jury's still out. I, I, I've only, this is the, I, I didn't see Elvis. So this only I saw. I thought Austin Butler was fucking awesome in this movie. Dude, he was so good. He was insane. Also, his voice, it, like somehow he got that voice exactly like uh, Skarsgård's voice. Yeah, it was. Like sick. He, he sounded just like uh, the Harkonnen. He I, was in Aliens in the Attic, right? What? Who, Austin, Butler? Austin Butler? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. That's a good pull, dude. I haven't heard that. Wait, pull yeah, up. Can, we, can we fact check? <laughs> I, maybe I'm making that fact up. Check? Pull up. Aliens must have been a kid. Attic. How old is Austin Butler? Uh, it's gonna be thirties now. That's oh. all I was thinking during Dune Two. At some point, so I was like, I can't believe he went from Aliens to the Attic to this. Dude, I was laughing so. Yes, hard. he is in there. Wow, nice. What call. a what a grab, Kala. Oh Wait, is that him God. with the look? Dude, yeah, he was like the hot kid from Aliens no Attic. No way. This was like riding that Sweet Life in Zack and Cody hot when this was like the hot look. Yeah, yeah. But he was he was on Zoe One Hundred and One too as like this hot guy. Dude, you know I what th- really blew my mind is when I found out that in real life, Zach was the nerdy one and Cody was the cool one. I wanted that life so bad. I just wanted their life so bad. Yeah. I've said this before on Defcon 5, but uh, when I was like, when I used to try and fall asleep when I was a kid, I would just pretend that I was in Hannah Montana. Hmm. That's how oh, that's yeah. how I call myself Dude, to fall really? asleep. I'd be like, <laughs> if I was just a character like friends with Mitchell Musso and like James, Dude, that's I how I'd fall that's asleep. That's a therapy couch <laughs> if I've ever like heard one. Episode. Yeah, pretty much. And I was like a main staple character. That's so funny. I didn't know that he was uh I thought he just got famous like from Elvis. I had no idea. Well, I, did you hear that I used to pretend that I had Cosmo and Wanda as my very odd parents? But you were really young, right? Yeah. How old were you when this happened? And I was probably like in, like fifth grade yeah that's that's normal i just love disney channel i just want my life to be like disney channel. i did too and i always like I, I your life kind of is like disney channel though isn't it my that's life facts. is kind of like a decom <laughs> like a disney channel original movie um yeah. you're uh you're what's the guy's name who's the short man from harry potter or from Anna montana <laughs> Uh, oh no, 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 no. the Rick, really short Rico? guy that, Rico? yeah what's, yeah. His, what's that actor's name might be Rico. i think it's rico <laughs> the classic short guy name <laughs> is it moses, rico moises Mo- Arias. oh yeah top I, five times moises arius went full god power mode <laughs> he was rico? he was a disney channel games goat he was dude the disney <laughs> he channel could, games. could throw that body around yeah top three disney channel original movies oh my god that's him now yeah dude he's best friends with uh jane smith She's gonna happen. Really, bro. Liam? That's what you and I. I thought that was like Allison Stoner. In twenty years, <laughs> Allison Stoner. I thought that was her. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. That seems like. Um, get him in Dune. Too. Wait, where's he? Pull up Jane Smith's specific what? picture. I'm talking about. That's in the middle. In the middle. In the middle. What? One down. You know which one I'm looking what at. What is dude. she? Nope. To the left. Uh, oh my god. The one with her. <laughs> that, the, you're the doing one, it on purpose. The one with her heaving breasts. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I've met this girl at a party before. What else? Is, what else happened in your life that you want to just like say? <laughs> she, I don't care. Is she a black queen? Pro- yes. I can't tell. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she is. Probably. Respect, bro. Emily, this, this is a new leather jacket. Yeah. Where'd you get it? Online at the store called Princess Polly. It smells bad though. Because yeah. <laughs> like you know when you order a fake leather jacket online and it just smells weird. No, no. I don't buy fake shit. Nah, I buy designer. Yeah. All right, well, you guys ever go? If anyone wants to Venmo me for some real leather, yeah, my Venmo is Emily Binder. Jerry, you look like you should be in the movie Grease. You should have the leather jacket with the the spikes on the shoulders. That would be sick. You actually could be Austin Butler's stunt double. Yeah, he he's got a good like weird looking hot guy thing going for him. Weird looking. I think he's he's he's, he's definitely a little weird looking. No, he's the one of the most handsome dudes ever. Wait, this leather jacket thing. I remember. I want to say it was fourth grade. I was trying to get my hands on a a leather jacket with a hoodie built into mm, it. Yeah, there was no actual hoodie, but it was just leather jacket with one yeah. of the fake hoodies yeah. in there. And I thought if I got that, they'd announce me as that president. Was, that was a big target by I am number four type beats. Yes, exactly. Is that Austin <laughs> Butler too? Uh, no, that's Alex Pfeiffer. He was hot for a minute too. I am number four. Uh, great fucking book. Great fucking movie. He, what else was he? What else was he dropping in these days? Oh no! Oh. Hey, I, I'd, I'd be down. Look at these pics too. 
<laughs> Rugby chick. Can, can, canaw the dog. No, you look, a up, look up I'm number four. You got to stay Sally yeah, yeah, yeah. on the pod. No, I see him right there. He's right there. Oh, Dude, yeah, this guy. He was beastly. This guy looks like he'd play a great racist. Oh, <laughs> Doesn't he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. He, he really, they really gave him the keys and he really fumbled. He had two big, uh, <laughs> two big rolls, beastly. They gave and... bro the reins. <laughs> they nerfed bro. Dude, uh, <laughs> you know what always blows my mind? When I find out, like, someone like Jacob Alordi, who, like, in the last year has just elevated to, like, is he one of the next superstars? Probably. Yeah. Like, like, that dude did Kissing Booth 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> like, it always blows my mind when I see these actors in these other movies that I'm like, oh, they were just paying their dues, <laughs> like until. You ever watch Kissing Booth? I never, I never. I know my sister loved it, but I know, I've never seen it. I know there's not supposed to be good uh, though. I, you, Will you showed me uh, Kissing Booth? It's, and it was hilarious. Fantastic. it's um, so horrific. Is he good? Is he like? He's got to be the the hunk in there. Right? He's like he, the best looking guy I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's like the he hot is, older dude, brother. He uh, is. He, in Saltburn, he's like so nice and s- he's so tall, and so hot. It's yeah, like he's absurd. so jacked. Oh, there's he's something so good looking. There's something. <laughs> he needs to have wet hair in every shot, in every movie he's in for the rest of his life. Look at that, dude. Are you kidding me? If no, I that's, if that's I had, not if I had my hair that wet and I look like that, everyone would be like, this guy is. He just got out of a minivan. He <laughs> got dropped off after chemo. He's doing. <laughs> <laughs> That dude's got like something. <laughs> there, there's like I didn't know who this guy was until Saltburn, and there's just so many people on in the world that I because Euphoria. Don't know yeah, I, I never watched that. So he's I guess dating Olivia. Uh, fucking what's her name? Olivia Jade Giannoli. So I have no idea who that Lori is. Lori Lachlan's daughter. Why does he look so skinny there? He's like the most jacked dude ever. He looks like David Byrne from talking. He's not. I don't even like. I just think even this is hot. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, the cover of a magazine he's on. Like with the earrings and the crop top, yeah. Dude. I don't care. I love when guys are gay. It's it's the hottest version of guys. Cut that again. There's some rugby player. <laughs> there like, was some rugby player in yesterday, and that guy was I, smoking. Yeah, that guy oh was, god! I went over to Emily, buzzing around, ask like talking about how hot he is. Like I go over to her computer. She's got him pulled up on the computer. <laughs> No, the funniest. You're was, a sex pass. Yeah, I was, I was, I was like xing you're out of tabs on my computer. I was xing out of tabs on my computer, and like Lupica was behind me, and he just like was waiting for something, and he was just happened to be looking, and like I paused on, like as I was like quitting out of tabs, and I look up and I realize that it's like the tab of the rugby player, and I look at him, and he's like, that makes sense. <laughs> well, he follows the pod, so if he's listening, if you want to be my boyfriend. Yeah, I'm here, dude. That, that's Her- sad as fuck. Genuinely horrific. <laughs> so sad. Genuinely why is that sad? Look. Why don't? Why is it sad to want a hot guy to be my boyfriend? That, no, that it's, would, it's, they, they it's beg. Yeah, it's the begging. It's the using the platform to. It's it's. All right, it's I take it back. I take it back. It's out there. Whatever. It's too late. Um, Jerry, you're kind of a resident movie buff. What I've noticed about Jerry Kana, it's it's. For this guy to give your movie five stars in Letterbox, it better be damn near perfect. It's coveted. What are what are your perfect movies? It's a very short list. I think there's like twenty, but I can give the top four right now Let's on do Letterboxd. Top four. Punch Drunk Love's number one. Never seen it. Um, it's fine. Love Paul Thomas Anderson. That's his favorite. Uh, he is he is one of the best. Fallen Angels, Wong Kar Wai. Did you guys watch? Never that? even heard of that. Great Korean film. That that's that's a real mm-hmm. film film poll. Mm-hmm. Heat's up there. Yes, yeah, Heat is yeah. so good. Yeah, and uh, John Tucker Must Die. I love that movie. Yeah. I love Respect. that movie. I'm yes. very Respect. surprised you have that at top four, though. That, Euro Trip and Hot Rod are my favorite comedies. Hot Rod's there. up there for my favorite comedy. I would probably say, for me, uh, number one, Citizen Kane, obviously. Number two. That is a five-star movie, for me, even if you're joking. I do have that in my... And number one of my spots. Sorry, I was just. No, you're just good. Finishing. Continue. Number two, a pigeon sat on a branch, reflecting on reality. Um, number three, that's probably it. Those are probably the only two perfect movies that exist. IMO. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Not Blindside. Yeah, Emily's the blind side. <laughs> favorite movie is the. Blind. Oh, I think I it's not. It's before. not. It's not. Craziest, craziest answer to you any question th- ever. You Any just crispy would that word so hard. What do you mean? You just said craziest. Crazy. Have you heard of the crispy R lore? Crazy. No. Like that? 
like people making fun of the Kardashians because they're are so crispy. No, I haven't heard of this. Oh, I can look it up. Yeah. See, Jerry, you, you come in here. You're going to learn a new thing or two. Yeah, I never, I've never heard this before at all. The crispy R. Someone just ripped ass. <laughs> it was not me. It wasn't me. It was not me. Oh my god, I smell that from over here. Are you serious? It I'm, had to be. One I of also you. swear no, on I my life. I swear to God, and fart. Emily. Uh, obviously, it wasn't me. What do you mean, obviously? First of all, I'm over here. Second of all, I'm not going to fart in a room. It smells like someone shit. It smells like someone pooped. Wait, wait. This is a bad moment to have a hole right here in my face. And to God. And and to God, God, I did not. And I know you didn't because I kind of know what your farts feel like now. Okay. Horrific, but. This is a bad moment to be the guy who has the hole right in his garage. Have you just been spread an eagle for that? I hope not. We'll put a little sticker. I need a blur. Did you actually not fart? I didn't. I also swear I did not I also was the one that called it out. Yeah, but whoever smelled the Delta. Shit. I don't smell it anymore. But for a second, that smelled like raw sewage. <laughs> <laughs> what if there's a demon passing through? Oh, well. The, oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know. I I heard that. Is that a conjuring thing that when it smells bad, it's a ghost? Uh, demons smell like rotting flesh and meat. I don't like that at all. Taking a quick break to talk about chubbies. Inside every man, there are two wolves fighting. One is the real introverted and socially awkward one. In doesn't want much attention. The other wolf is wearing a shirt with a skull on it and smoking a clove cigarette, yelling at the first wolf that he should talk to girls more. They are fighting. There is a storm inside every man, but inside those two wolves, inside that storm, there are two more wolves with storms inside them, and inside those two wolves, even more wolves. One is timid, gnawing at the spot where his testicles used to be because he has been domesticated by an elderly couple. Yes, he has, and the other wolf is a real wild, jumping in the pool, crazy chugging out of a freaking uh, vodka water bottle, uh, pork shoulder in his mouth, wolf. The other wolves laugh at his devil-may-care attitude, but inside those wolves, you aren't going to believe this. Like nesting dolls is another dark wolf and a light wolf fighting yin and yang. It's a story as old as time. But those two wolves still have to get dressed in the morning. And guess what they're wearing? Yeah, if you couldn't tell, then you're a fucking idiot. They're wearing chubbies. Liam, what features of chubbies do you particularly like? Um, I like uh, just the way that they feel. And That's I awesome. Like, I like the wow. way they make me look. Yes, I like those. Uh, both of those things, too. Took the words right out of my mouth. Introducing the Bunch of Wolves collection. Action, action, action. By Chubbies. Chubbies, Chubbies, Chubbies. Find your inner wolf. Whoa, 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 whoa. And put some shorts on him at Chubbies.com. Oh, oh, oh. Come, 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 come. Let's get back into the episode. All right, well, how, well, your flight back from uh, Boston. Dude, uh, I did a crispy O there. <laughs> you really got nothing. I'm thrown off from the crisp VRs. I don't. I, I don't understand the thing. That is just like classic, right, Liam, classic, come on. classic right. binder jackknife into the pool. No, dude. <laughs> jack, okay, binder Emily, jackknife Emily, into I'm, the shallow end. I'm not trying to be mean. Biggest binder jackknife I've ever seen was last episode. We were talking about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. No. And, oh, did she, like, did she just fully be like? I you don't. know where that came from, and you know no, I didn't I know. mean it. What? No, I know. Oh. That's why I'm saying I'm not. I'm not trying to be mean. Oh, okay. Like okay. it's. But we were talking about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch for like ten minutes, really laughing like it was a great segment. And Emily was like, "We've been talking about it too long." Like we took a break to do, uh, let them pee, and she was like, "No, we talk about it too long. No more. No more." And so the next thing she goes is, "Okay, uh, I have something I want to talk about, Billy. What would your hot dog call be if you're trying to sell hot dogs at the baseball store?" <laughs> and I was like, "Did you just move on from that segment?" Because you just wanted to like inject the hot dog, it was. I don't. I don't. <laughs> we'll, we'll, cut, we'll cut this part, obviously. But. I don't want you to take this the wrong way at all because it's not an insult. The things that you th- find interesting suck. <laughs> that is so. Well, mean. that's why I'm not the host of this I'm podcast. Just kidding, dude. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm vicious. kidding. I'm kidding. That was a joke. No, no, no. I, I, I could take that I, with a grain of salt. I, well, that I, was a I joke. want. I want. I'm joking, and I do want to talk about something that you brought up. That you're gonna explain the Cyrus. Oh, so, not now, but we'll get. Okay, into well, we'll get we'll get into that. All right, I gotta so tell you what later. happened. My flight, your flight, dude. I stunk up my plane with my sandwich. I had the stinkiest sandwich on my plane. I couldn't believe it, dude. I had a. I it was. I was laughing to myself because I was like, it didn't smell bad. It wasn't like a bad smelling sandwich. Just like a chicken cutlet. Shout out Bennett's in Boston. So good. Uh, but I'd been sitting in my backpack for a few hours. And <laughs> that is sick. horrific. And I got. Uh, 
I got I got a little buzzed at the Sam Adams bar with a butt, and I got on the plane, and just thought, you know what I got to do is I got to eat my I got to eat that last last half of my my yeah. chicken cutlet, and I everyone on the plane could smell my sandwich. I knew it. I knew it. I knew everyone was like, "Who's this guy?" <laughs> and it, dude, it uh, stunk the whole uh, plane. When I see someone unpeeling saran wrap around a sandwich, I want to like pull the lever on the exit row and jump out the plane i think that is insane i don't think you should be allowed to bring your own food on a plane <laughs> i think you're a, a certified loser if you do that i know it's a crazy take but that's a hot take but i dude there's something really it's almost uh, i think you know <laughs> That guy who was just airdropping pictures of uh, people of his penis on the plane. Yeah. And he has a fetish about getting humiliated. Yeah. That's how I felt while I was eating my stinky sandwich on the plane. I you was wanted like, people to watch? I wanted everyone to look at me and say, You like, want someone to shout? I wanted them to say, Who's this stinky boy? Well, if you think <laughs> if you think people don't care, everyone cares. When you start unpeeling that saran wrap, you are putting a spotlight on a spotlight on yourself. Okay. Everyone's watching. Everyone's wishing you weren't. So that fear you have, oh, no one really cares. No, they do. And you're going to th think about that next time. That's all I'll say. In terms of like airport or airplane etiquette, that's like bottom tier for me. Like, mm -hmm. no, I'm saying like I don't care if people – I've never once thought about that stinky sandwich on a plane or stinky food. Did you take your shoes off on the that plane? That was – I was about to say, Fuck hell no. no. People that do Fuck that are no. sickos. Wait, what? I do. I do that. Of course you My do. feet don't smell though. Of course you I, do. Are, do. You have socks on at least. Yeah. Ugh, why would I not have socks on? Because you do some you do some spooky stuff. Yeah, fair enough. You make some spooky decisions. Fair enough, but if I'm just in my personal seat and I want to take my I don't want to wear my shoes while I'm like sleeping for five hours on the plane. And if my feet don't smell, then it's fine. If your feet smell and you do that, I'm mad at you. What about reclining? That's so allowed. I don't, I don't recline either. What? <gasps> I don't do it. Why? It's a personal thing. You think I'm it's not, disrespectful? I just every time it happens to me, I'm like, I want, I want this motherfucker dead. I it never totally agree. Me. I only do it if the person in front of me does it. And I, I'm like, I gotta do it to you too. It's a chain of reaction, and I they do it, it to me. I, I do, I do the knees in the back. I break the cycle. <laughs> wow. I stop. Yeah, you're one of them ones. That's like really respectful of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think they should have a recliner on your chair if it's disrespectful and you shouldn't do it. Another hard transition, but something else that happened to me at home. Matt Duncan Donuts, shout out. Uh, s something, I have headphones on, listen to a podcast. I can kind of hear someone talking to me from behind me, but I'm not sure. Before I can even put it together, I get hit in the back of the thigh slash calf. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm in a bad, angry mood, so I turn around. I'm like, "What? Look like nobody there." Look down, man in a wheelchair, <laughs> face c purple and black. Whole face looked like he had been hit with a baseball bat, but like not swelling, bruised, just bruised, old, covered in dirt, uh, clearly kind of mentally ill. Was like, "Hey, I'm stranded. I gotta go to. I gotta get to dialysis. Can you get me an Uber?" And I just said, "Yeah." All right, so I just call an Uber, and I wait and get him into this Uber, and then I start walking away, and I was kind of being like, yeah, this was a nice thing to do. That's like, you know, that's a good thing. And I was like, what if he attacks this Huge Uber risk driver? for your Uber rating. Yeah, like what Massive if... risk. Cool for that guy. What if... Would I get in trouble if he just stabbed and ate my Uber driver? Yeah, probably. Damn, dude, that's crazy. He's probably got strong arms, too. He was like, "Do you have a cigarette?" And I was like, "FDR." <laughs> FDR. I just heard one of my my uh, my tales from my adventures on the on the travels. FDR had some anchor arms. Yeah. Um. Let me see. I got other topics, dude. That's the, here's the thing. Uh, my smelly sandwich. Does he want to talk about? It? You directed your first film. It's true, dude. Oh, but, you did. But it, but it got the cannot cut. We 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 went the cannot cut. I like that. Yeah, the cannot cut, dude. Cannot Falbonian cut. twist. Cannot cut. Was there a Falbonian twist? Cannot cut yeah. it. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Cannot made it so you know it's cut <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't wait. If five years from now, I'm gonna be watching like the Jerry Cannot Tyler Falbo 
commentary. The, the, like just the sketches playing and Tyler and Kanat chopping it up. The actors talk and chop. Actors around the table, but Falvo's in a uh, fucking like Hannibal Lecter mask. And they have his, <laughs> he's got a spit mask on because he attacked the judge because she was a chick. Yeah, yeah, we got to do Fabo in the Lecter mask and you and me just sitting there adding. He can't touch it at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what's crazy? Like, have you seen uh, the Always Sunny episode where Dennis Reynolds, like, they have the sex doll of him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That if Tyler had his mouth taped shut, I would uh. still hear everything he would say. <laughs> like, it didn't matter if he was talking or not. Him just being there would be like, I would hear all the insults and I would hear all of the critiques. You know, you guys ever notice this on the different ways he walks down the stairs in the other office? If he's not, if he's, if he's not coming down to say anything or talk to anyone, it's a normal walk down. But sometimes he's just like this cocky gate. Yeah. When he comes down and he knows he's about to throw some throw some falbonial coals yeah. on the fire. You can the <laughs> falbonial coals. Yeah. The the um, length between paces, like you can tell, he's about to wear your ass out. Yeah. Like you're about to go to battle. Or he'll do kind of like a John Ham thing where he'll work himself up to, you know, like a, like a decent swell in his pants and then just, just like, uh, like just. He'll just press against you when you're at your desk. Yeah. He just so like, can you he'll feel how big I am? <laughs> yeah. He just like kind of paper clips his sweatpants. So they, they pull tighter on his thighs and he's like, he, he's talking to me and he knows I can see him. He yeah. knows I can see how big he is. He knows you're too much of a pussy to call it out though. Exactly. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good guy, though. He's a great guy. Contractually, I'm not allowed to say anything. Yeah, I forgot about that. He doesn't do any of that joke. You got it. I mean, yeah. Needless to say, Jerry's driving a really nice fucking car right now. <laughs> Life is good. For- Life <laughs> is good for Kana. Kana settle out of court. <laughs> <laughs> the judge made it right. <laughs> Kana made it, so you know it hits right. I can't do that for myself. <laughs> Dude, yes, you can. No, you, you, Kana, you can. If anyone in this office can, you can. You cannot. Kana, what what else in the world have you been has been, you know, piquing your interest lately? Wait, wait, mm. one one more. Yeah, there's nothing he cannot do. Can I ball, can I chill? Clan S N. What's going on in the world? Yeah. Jerry's into his girlfriend right now, is what yeah, I've I'm been just, hearing. Boo! I saw bro. a whipped. Uh, ah. Uh, she she is like a sweetheart though, for real. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hung out with her friends this week in that visit from home, and I drank. I got the most hammer out of anyone there, and I didn't embarrass myself. But I, I bet, think I had twenty I, beers. I, I, bet, I bet you did embarrass day. yourself. I yeah. bet I bet you they were being nice, and you did really embarrass yourself, and your girlfriend was pretty embarrassed of you. Honestly, I bet you that's what happened. Generally, that is like the vibe I got. Don't let it get to you, but. I I, I think that you kind of just burnt a bridge with your girlfriend that she's going to probably, it's going to take a few months for her to work up the steam to break up with you, but you yeah. just started that process. And every time she brings it up, um, you're going to freak out about it and she'll learn to not bring it up. And so you can kind of uh, <laughs> oh, no. es- essentially control her that way. Yeah. So. It's not, no, no. What'd you guys do? Where'd you guys go? Uh, walked, walked around Venice, you know, the guy yelled downward at me and then went home. That was with her. I was by myself at that point. I, I drifted off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that wasn't very interesting. She was with her. Cop. <laughs> I, with I, their... I'm interested. Yeah, there's not a lot that goes through my my mind like during the week. This is crazy to me. You told me that you don't have a running commentary in your head. Untrue, but what? How did you put it? It's not that I don't have running commentary, but it's like ninety percent of the time when I'm my what internal conscious is, is a song playing. Isn't that insane? Mine is always like uh, like the goblin from the first Spider-Man, like yelling horrible things. Yeah, you guys have to- told me that before. And that, green I'm almost glad that I have this. Yeah. I don't I'll, think I – wait. Define inner commentary. Like I always hear my own voice commenting on like what I'm doing. Like I'm thinking the thoughts, obviously. It's not like – Yeah. It's not like the telephone. Yeah, call. I just have like I Iris think, playing in my head or whatever that's song. Sick. Or whatever song like we're using the video. That's and I the only other thing I get is like I'll be sitting there, I'll just be sitting up in the room and be like, How am I breathing right now? That's like my version of an internal monologue, and then I'll start freaking out and I'll be like, <laughs> like what is allowing me to breathe? How am I doing this by <laughs> myself? Eighty five percent of the days I like I I'm just thinking about how am I alive. It's a big big worry for me. Mm-hmm. 
I think about if I'm dying a lot, especially right before I go to bed. I'm like, what if I die in my sleep? I oh yeah. Last night. I don't give a I, shit I if get I die too. in my sleep. I feel I like that's I the easiest way to go out. Yeah, I wouldn't even know it happened. Yeah, but I mean like now. You don't want to die now. Yeah, if you're like. No, I don't want to die. But if I died in my sleep, it would you're be not like, going to know. It'd be like I went to sleep and it'd be like, I wouldn't know. I don't know. I then don't, it's not my problem. I kind of want to be awake when I die. What? Yeah, I want to see what that's like. That's dark. I don't no, think you would see what it's like. You, you feel You want to experience death? Yeah. Like Anton Yelch when the Jeep crushed him? Damn. <laughs> that's, damn. Where, where did that... Were you on? Damn. Were you on Reddit? Yesterday? I literally saw it on <laughs> yeah, Reddit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw. I saw the same. Thing. Okay, oh. so we're doing the same thing. Horrible I way to go. Horrible thing. way yeah. to go. Holy shit! <laughs> what a what a uh, yeah! Wow! Holy hell, Kana! Well, if you were alive, which way would you want to go out? You just want to like go heart attack out, or like? I'm pro- that's probably. I'm, I mean, I'm definitely going heart attack out. I feel like I'm having a heart attack. Fifty percent of the day. I'm, that makes you glad. I'm, I'm glad you said that because I do too. No, like legit, like no joke. I, well, I feel like I'm gonna go down any moment. Well, you're a big guy. You got a lot of blood to pump. Yeah, it's all going to my dick. Hey, <laughs> yeah, man, what can he come do? Come on, sorry. It's working sorry. overtime. Name that movie. <laughs> uh, something with Ben Affleck. Yeah. The wait, town. wait. Oh, I didn't hear. Yeah. I didn't hear it. Uh, the town. No. Air. The Departed. Paycheck. Oh, it's Ben Affleck. Scene. Ben Affleck's it's in not the in Departed. Departed. It's oh, another wait, no. five star movie. Ooh, ooh, press your forehead to the barrel of this gun. Uh, kind of, same, same shit though. So was it the town? No, it was. Uh, it was, I was wrong, and I'm gonna, uh, I guess, zip tie my nuts and do that for a while. Let's see what happens. Um, Emily, what do you got? Pull out that big list. Dude, hit us with that sword story. Let Kana sink his teeth into this. <laughs> what sword story? Get ready. Get set. By the way, Jerry, whenever you need to leave, like you can I know, I'm having a great out. time. If I'm allowed to, to stay, you're allowed yeah, to. Chill. You're allowed to like be a permanent host. Oh my gosh, I'm not built for that. I'm not. I can't handle the spot like Onne. spotlight like you guys can. On bro. brov. On Oh brov. wow. Oh here, I got. I found the video. Oh perfect. Can so, you ex- oh, teacher made students fight with swords. All right, let's see. Pretty this. sweet shit. My my te- one of my teachers would do sword fights with me. I'm not even kidding. What? Are you talking about like pissing sword fights? Yeah, like when I was in um, preschool, like we would if I had to go, he would go with me and we would cross streams. Mm. I cannot be real. <laughs> I told you that I I uh, I used to do that with my buddies when we were really young kids. We'd race like sword fight and just like race whoever you know and then his dad came in one time we were really young he was like boys don't do that with other boys did he beat did he beat that out of your friend no no but i remember just thinking damn i gotta stop pissing with my buddy we would do this thing i think everyone did this at one point where we would see how far back from the urinal we could stand while we peed my friend and then and then once you got toward the end you'd have to waddle back closer my friend used to pull his pants down and back up a few feet from the uh, the urinal, and spin on one leg, and piss in a circle. Oh, that's funny. In in school, yeah, you do piss and poop pies, right? Yeah. What? Yeah, you just like if you if you put if you piss if you shit and like kind of hit it down, it's like a plate. Then you just like it's cr- it sounds barbaric saying out loud, but but if you piss on top of it and then you like sink your fingers into it, it makes like really funny farting noises. You know, like it sounds like, but you're a kid, so like. No, you didn't do that. Yes, we did. Not well, not in the urinal because the holes aren't there, but the drain under the yeah, you get what I'm saying. Wait, what? Yeah, the drain under the handicap stall. Yeah, like there's holes in it because it's a drain. And you would Shit. waffle stomp. Yeah, I was gonna. That's where you would kick the poop through, stomper. and then you would sink your fingers in. It would make a. Farting. You're lying. I'm not kidding. It's disgusting. You put your fingers in your shit. Yes. Yeah, but we were kids. Well, not like, we it's were your like, shit. We were like it's eight, your shit. You're lying. We were in You're like lying. eighth grade. I'm not that good. Eighth grade. Yeah, middle school. It's You're your shit. It's not like it's fucking You're like. You're bullshitting. You're literally bullshitting me right like now. You've never Look stomped. it up. Look up you've waffle never, stomp. You've never stomped your own. Google shit down waffle a drain. stomp right now. Nope. I can't. I can't. I can't even believe this right now. See, there you go. You're a lot. You did that. You touched your. Everyone, everyone did, it. did it. 
No. You're yes. acting like I was no. touching his. I was touching my yeah, own. Touching you your don't own. Do it I don't care. You wash your hands after. Yeah. So? So you so wash your, your hands are clean. After you touch your no. own duty. Yeah, but you no. wash your hands. So, I don't give it. Oh, and so you're, and you have the audacity to tell me that washing a plunger in the shower is gross. That is what? disgusting. That, that is nasty. disgusting. You think that's disgusting and we massaging were your own shit we into a drain is not? We were it's like children. playing an instrument. It's like playing you're you're literally touching those, it like it's those. slime. Yeah. That's disgusting. So is washing your shit onto your shower floor. Where your feet are. That's not even my <laughs> shit though. What do you mean? That's a plunger. You're rinsing it off. You don't think there's And then you spray down the you, shower. You don't think your poop's stuck on that plunger? Come on. You're Binder, you're touch like what if it gets in your nails? We were kids. It would. We would it wash would our hands. Get, it would get in your nails. You have to that get is in there. You bite your nails. Beyond off. me. Beyond me. It, it, I, it's not like I decided. And the fact that all three of you have done that. Did you go to public school growing up? Yes. Mm, How? Yeah. I don't apply yeah, it. I don't get that. And maybe you I never just didn't had know the teacher this. pull the kids out and be like, "You got to stop doing this." We had like two assemblies well, one year, just and this was when I was younger, so I didn't even know what they were about. Because they didn't know which grade was doing it. Yeah. And it was so, always the male teacher would have to bring, like, if he was, like, the eighth grade was, teacher, he'd be the, the fifth grade teacher. the teacher would take the girls yeah, out yeah. to, like, recess or whatever. Yep. No this girls never were happened. waffle stomping. No, no, no. I know, no, because no. they didn't this want them to guys. hear about yeah. it. So they'd take the girls out for, like, a walk, yeah. and then the guys were going to talk. Well, look, clearly it worked, because I never heard about it. Yeah. That's true. That's so disgusting. It's not If I asked my brother, he would say he never has done that. I guarantee you, if you ask your brother, you wash your hands. I will pay you a million dollars. Call him right now. I will. Brother, and ask him if he's ever waffle song. Call him right now. We're sixth grade. And I bet you he's not going to have any idea what it means either. What did you guys? What did you guys call the whole thing though? We didn't have a name for it, but we would we would just say waffle song. We knew it was piss pie, piss pie, I think, or something like that. Quick question: Do you know what waffle stomping is? Waffle stomping. Yeah. Am I on the podcast right now? <laughs> oh, yes. Waffle stomping, I have zero clue what that is. Mm. It's when you put your, what are you, shit in the in your, the drain of the of the public bathrooms at school and elementary school, and then you massage it with your fingers. All three guys that are in this room have done that before, and I was like, I will pay you a million dollars if my brother even knows what that is. Have, have they done it off her decker? Done what? An upper decker? Yes. Oh, yeah. Upper decker? Our what does that mean? Yeah. Tanks, but we would do it on the. They, back. they know what that we, is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're per- so have you waffle stomped in, or have you ever heard of it? I've never heard of it. I, I've never done it. I don't plan on doing it. <laughs> plan on. Thank you. Love you, bye. Privilege is showing. It, maybe it's like yeah. I told you. Like my brother's a normal human being. You guys are not. I feel like it's pretty normal. Yeah. I it's wonder how many people in this Google. office have done huh? that. I wonder how, how many, many guys, guys in this work office. here. And I wonder how many guys in this office have done that. How many guys work here? Because I can give. I you... bet you like Quinn has not. <laughs> okay, well, uh, actually, I believe that I, Quinn hasn't. His yeah. hands are dirty, nonetheless. That's oh, what I said. Oh, Kana! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this is your awakening to this. I am in disbelief. Well, we got the title of the episode. Title of the episode, Gaslighting Emily. <laughs> yeah, none of that's true. None of that's true. What? Obviously. <laughs> Waffle stomping <laughs> is real. That is Obviously, a thing, we aren't putting we our didn't finger, do it. fingers in poop. I fucking knew that. <laughs> no, you didn't, though. You didn't know it enough to, to, to not say... I, <laughs> to not call your brother. But it's a no, real No, it thing. is a real thing. No, like, if you have, like, a crate a real shower, you... Yeah. I fucking knew it. I was saying that for 20 minutes, and then you finally were like, all right, like, we've done we it. tricked you. I hate ah, you. you fell for a trap. This, like, scars me from the times know, that I'm I've sorry. been lied to by men, and <sighs> I believe it. To be fair, and though. And I'm still believing it. To be fair, same. we only do this on the pod. No, you don't. When have you I tell gaslit me, you before? You tell me <sighs> I'm doing a good job every day. Oh, that is true. Yeah, <gasps> that is gaslighting. When I'm not. Wow. Characters. Hey, yeah, let's get some characters for you. All right, I got a quick, I got a really quick one. Oh, do we need Jerry to leave? Yeah, I was going to say, I have to leave, yeah. Okay. And I, All right, I don't sorry, have I don't Kanaw, thanks, bro. No, I don't have Kanaw, brother. Kanaw, it's been this, real. Yeah. Hope you go waffle stomping later. Always a pleasure.
Taking a quick break to talk about game time. Guys, you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event, okay? Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. It's awesome. Seriously, last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. These are some of the things that you're going to experience in the game time app. Well, I u- I'll tell you this. I use Game Time. Very expensive Mavericks tickets. Very expensive to see Mr. Luka Doncic in person. However, Game Time, they hooked it up fatty style. I got to go to the game at the last minute for a good price. I didn't have to pay a million bajillion dollars to see Mr. Luka Doncic flex his little, his, his, his nice, sexy little abs for me in the front row. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code FRIDAY for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code FRIDAY for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Guys, I think I saw my pediatrician way too late in my life, and she was she was old. She was about to die, and she'd grip my nuts, and it felt like an eagle claw was down there, and I didn't like it. And I should have been using ZocDoc, okay? The place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable and actually listen to you, okay? And we're not talking about a few. We're talking about tens of thousands of doctors, all with verified pain reviews, so you can make sure the vibes are vibing before you ever meet in real life IRL with Wait, ZocDoc. You're seeing, you're seeing 10,000 doctors at once? This you, sounds like the best app of all time. It's, it is. Okay, with ZocDoc, you got more options than you know. You serious? ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you. I like this and and you're going to like ZocDoc too, guys. So go to ZocDoc.com slash Almost Friday and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Almost Friday. ZocDoc.com slash Almost Friday. Let's get back into the episode. Okay. I'm Danny Disappear. This is my third time in witness protection, and I'm meeting new people in a new city. Hey, how you doing? I'm Tommy Smith. Hey, Tommy. All right, that's it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, great work. That was awesome. That was awesome. See, that's that's perfect. That's a great quick hitter, dude. That's so good. I liked it. Holy shit! That's all you get. That's 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 fantastic. All right, let me try one out here. Uh, my name is. Uh, uh, my name is. My name is. Uh, uh, my name's Sean. Sean Cookie. Cookie. Good name. Good teamwork. My name is Sean Cookie. We are in seventh grade. I'm hanging out at your house, and you ask me to sleep over. Okay. Oh, dude, by the way, um, we can sleep over if you want. I, I'm My mom's going to order pizza and stuff. Oh, so. sick. Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me pause this. Let me, uh, I'll just call my mom and ask. Hey mom, can I sleep at uh, can I sleep over at Owens tonight? Owen Benchley. Yeah, Owen. Ben- can I sleep over Owen Benchley tonight? I took the bus over after school. I told you I was going here. Okay. Um, mom's going to come pick me up. What? Yeah, apparently... What did she say? I don't know. Apparently like, your dad's like a pedophile. And that's why you guys moved here. <laughs> apparently your dad was like the teacher at the old high school in the town you lived at in Arizona. And he like fingered a 14-year-old shit, like a freshman. <laughs> and that's why you guys moved here. So I can't sleep over my mom's No, he got up. a new job here. Ah, I guess like, your dad's like a fucking pedophile or something, dude. No, none of that's true. We just got to... That's no, what no, no, my no. mom just told me, dude. I'll look up your dad right now. What? I'll look up your dad right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, do you not know this? You should probably know no, if your dad's no. a pedophile. He told me that he got a, we got a new job and that's why we had to move. I mean, yeah, in the middle of the school year, sure, that's, that's odd, but... Uh... Here we go. Um, 
I don't think that's right. Here, yeah, I'm gonna text in, my in mom. A, in a teacher charged with inappropriate student relationship in Arizona high school. Owen Benchley Sr. arrested Sunday morning for uh, explicit text explicit text with a 14 year old and fi- yeah 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 he's a pedophile. What? Let me see yeah, that. Yeah. Dude, that sucks. Do you want to see over my house? <laughs> I could ask my mom if we could sleep over my house. Uh, Let me ask my mom. Yeah, I don't really want to be here anymore. Is that hey, okay mom. if I come over for a couple of days? Hey, mom, can Owen come over? Do you think that <clears throat> your dad, like, passed it down to you and that you're going to, like, try to, like, do some weird sexual shit to me at some point or my mom or my family? I don't. I'm 14. I don't know that. He's He says he's not even sure, so I'm going to take that as a yes. So let's just... Can you just pick me up? All right. She said no. She's being a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, dude. Oh, that's funny. That was a good one. <clears throat> All right. I got a... Dude, man, what a... How do you get over that? Because that's that's got that happened to some kids. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, no, no. So my has got a tail. Uh oh. Buddy of mine's. I don't. They're, I don't think they're dating anymore. But buddy of mine's girlfriend, uh, her dad, moved to Arizona from Massachusetts because he was uh Diddler. fingering a fucking chick. He was a pedophile fingering. I remember finding that out and being like, now what is your life like because of this? I don't know if we talked about this, but you guys have like pedophiles, like teachers at your school that got kicked out. Hell yeah, dude. I've had like a couple, yeah. Uh, We never had one. I I had two. I went to Catholic school growing up, dude. No, I I did too. Like I always suspected. But I went to Catholic school in Massachusetts. Oh, that's where, that's like the hub. That's, they love, they love it, dude. They love it. That's New York City for pedophiles. They're like young cum is like caviar to them. Truly, mm-hmm. those dudes suck it up. And I love, hey, I love the Catholic Church. But dear God, do they love fucking young boys. It's crazy. It must be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like that Louis bit. Oh, yeah, it is like that Louis I bit. like one teacher in middle school who got kicked out for, like, watching porn during school. And one Was in- it a guy? You can get kicked yeah. out for that? See, dude, I did, I, hear me out. This is a crazy take. Okay. I already, yeah. Male elementary school teachers. Yeah. I I get what you're saying. It's we and, talked about this with Elise. It's almost like male babysitters. It's just not. And a thing. I'd never do it. I would never do. It. I would it's, just rather have a. Yeah. I don't know. I just find it in, like because I've had great male elementary school teachers, but I'm like that's a weird. I just like it's a, it's a weird thing to be. I don't. Actually, I just, yeah, I never really thought about it until now. I never had a male teacher until I was in fifth grade. I'm not talking about middle school or high school. Either. Like, specifically, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a third grade. Yeah. Like, a, a 50-year-old dude that's a third grade teacher. I'm like, why are you doing this? I know. I actually know one teacher that's a male that's, I think he taught elementary school, but he was, like, my math tutor. Perfect definition of a reason, like, that man, men can be teachers like that. He's like, I would never question him as a, yeah, or that wrong. But, like, I do think that for most people. I've, I've never had a uh, male teacher that I was like, you're probably a pedophile. Me neither. But at the same time, it's like, I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask a man to babysit my kids. No. Because pedophiles always find jobs near kids. So when you see a grown man that has a job where he's yeah. surrounded by children, I'm like, uh, you're a great guy and you're not, but also... Hmm. Do you think that's why they want to keep the office here? Because there's a school down the street? Probably. Prontly. 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 <laughs> Prontly. Prontly. Okay, I gotta, ca- I gotta care. Do it. I'll probably cut some of that to your stuff. Probably. Prontly. Prontly. Okay, da 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 I'm Coach Powell, your star quarterback, Vic Thunderbolt. Yep. Ooh. Yep. Yes, he is. Um and it's halftime of the Super Bowl and we're losing. Thunderbolt, my office now. Okay. Hey coach. I'm so I'm freaking out right now. And I, I need you to be a leader. Uh, I'm just I'm worried. 
What's going on? I'm worried. Uh, I don't know. It's like the o- o- oh, what am I gonna do? I've been sacked ten times in the first. What half am I gonna time. do? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we just oh, try to air out. Maybe I hope it's not sticky. Uh, I hope it doesn't get in my eyes. What are you talking about? Oh, what are we gonna do? What do I do? I think we you just. You think I can shower after the game? What are you talking about? When they dump the Gatorade on me, it's gonna be so sticky. Yeah, I'm so worried. That's gonna be sticky. Like, what if it's red and I don't like the red flavor? Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, I think- do they dump the Gatorade on you if you lose? No. Oh, thank God. But we're gonna win this game, Coach. Yeah. No, we're gonna win. We're gonna win. But you know. Yeah. No, we're gonna win. Yeah. What's your plan? What's our plan to win? What's your plan to win? It's why do you seem like you don't want to win? You're not no, certain that we're gonna win. I, listen, nobody wants to win more than me. I've been to how many Super Bowls now? I don't. I think this is your first one. Ever. I think. What if though? Because now I'm thinking like I saw like I'm wondering if it's like the actual Gatorade from the bottle or if it's the Gatorade where they mix it where because that's more sticky because there's more sugar. That's it's the Gatorade where they mix it. Yeah, <sighs> you never seen them do it? No, I've seen it, and I ask them, mm. "What's going on?" Oh, it's okay. We got three minutes. Fuck. You can shower after you get hit with the Gatorade. It won't be that sticky. Yeah, but then everyone will think I'm like some big baby and like nobody's I'm everyone's like gonna some sh- big baby in a diaper that I need to shower off the Gatorade. Well, yeah. I'm supposed to sit there and give the speech with. Now we got two minutes. Give the speech with Gatorade all over me, Coach. We should game plan. Not good we, optics. We should game plan before we go back out there, Coach. Throw a pass further than three yards. I don't have any time back there. We need to change up the like. We got to do something. Shotgun something. If Play gets, action. If it gets in my eyes and I look like I'm crying. My career's over. We got like a minute left. Would you, what, 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 what would you like the offense to do in the second half? That, mm, at least give me a warning. The, you know how embarrassing that football is? Wise, not game. Football wise, not football. I'm saying football wise, if it's like the O linemen, probably got to get out of here in a second. If it's like the O linemen, they dump it and it comes from a higher. Height, so the velocity hurts more. So now I'm worried it's sticky and it hurts because they're taller. I'll tell the so guys. Maybe get a slot receiver. I'll tell the guys not to dump any Gatorade on you after the game, no matter what. Okay? Are you yeah. gonna tell us what the fucking game plan is for the second half now? Yeah, throw a pass further than three yards. That's you said that. That's oh, not, that's, sorry. Oh, my game plan to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, draft a new fucking quarterback. <laughs> get out. Okay, man. All right, that's Coach Powell. <laughs> that's great. That's great. He's just worried about the Gatorade. I really thought it was going to be, I was like, how is this about cum? <laughs> You're like, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, I was yeah. like, how is he going to get this to being cum? Uh, I love that. I love that. Thanks. Um, we'll just put a big bleep there. And then make it sound like you said the N word. Yes. You remember that, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. That was insane. I don't remember what you said, though. Anyway. Um, I'm JJ Christmas. <laughs> We're hanging out and uh, I'm a really annoying yawner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So just start chatting. So stupid. <laughs> is there a ho- is it a holiday or we're just like just hanging out and watching the game? Okay, because it was Christmas, so I didn't know. Okay, that's my last thing. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> okay. I think uh, yeah, we got to draft a new guy. He's just not him. And uh, Jesus. Is that how you yawn? Fuck. JJ. Dude, stop. JJ. JJ. Stop. Sorry, I'm tired. Um, it's uh, more serious news, though. Uh, Carly's really sick. And... JJ, come on. I'm trying to talk to you. Sure, go ahead, man. Carly's Call really sick, and um, we got a GoFundMe, and I know that your business has been doing really well, so I 
obviously feel uncomfortable asking you, but uh, we're trying to raise money because she needs new. She's really sick. Who is it? Sorry. My wife. Oh, fuck. Um, okay. Go and we're trying to raise money because, uh, and again, you had a great year and your business is doing awesome. You've been really generous, but I'm asking just one more time. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> that was, that's been, that was my that favorite was crazy. in a while. That was crazy. <laughs> I could not stop laughing. Does that get your nuts twisted up and leap up inside your tummy? Are you interested in F1? Are you interested in racing? I watched the Drive to Survive documentary on Netflix and I was hooked. Okay? I felt like my cock was in my throat. Yeah. There is so much more depth to F1 and racing than I ever could have imagined. The teams are insanely big. The money, the glamour, the 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 pageantry. It's unbelievable. If you want to take a deeper look into F1, then you, I have news for you, my friend. We work with a couple crazy fellas, Brian and Matt, and they host the Red Flags podcast, a part of the Almost Friday family this is an incredible podcast. They have incredible guests. Uh, they really, they really sunk their teeth into F1, and they're very knowledgeable about it. They're very funny. They're and certified nasty SOBs. They, I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it, but that is the truth. That is genuine. That is the genuine truth through and through. They are certified SOBs. Nasty SOBs. So go check them out. Uh, I love seeing those two fuckers when they pop in the office. Matt and Brian are my favorite dudes. And even if you're not that into F1, if you're just like, you're like, I'm going to get, this is a great way to get into F1 too. True. And even if you're like, I don't even fuck with F1, Matt and Brian are entertaining as hell. So just yeah. listen. It would be strange if you hated F1 to listen to their pod just for the comedy, but you could try. You could try. I would recommend trying. You're going to end up getting an F1. That's what's going to happen. But seriously, go- guys, the Red Flags podcast. Wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe to their YouTube channel. New episodes drop every Monday. What's awesome is all the cars that are in it. That's so, what the, my favorite part is like, yeah. they're like, oh, that car. It's like. The, the way they do it, it's like the car, I can't do, this I'm car, that car. Yeah. I mean. I'm doing, I'm doing a disservice. <laughs> True. And let's get back into the episode. Now I need to explain the Miley Cyrus family situation to you guys. Yes, please. Oh, what is, yeah. So. Basically, Miley Cyrus has a sister named Noah Cyrus. Correct. Noah uh, lovely Cyrus. Lovely voice. Noah Cyrus was dating this guy. I think he's from a show. And he he's couldn't. from Prison Break. Yes, Prison Break. And I guess they broke up and, and now Miley Cyrus is, or Miley Cyrus' is mom. So Noah and Miley's mom is now married to the same man. Married. Married to the Prison Break man who was dating her daughter. Oh, they probably, pro- they probably did the dirty deed. They both did the dirty deed with the same man. I guess. How old is this this gentleman? And how old is Ni- Noah Cyrus? Noah Cyrus is young. She's twenty four, and Dominic Purcell. Fifty four. <gasps> when did they date? No. No, that's not okay. Is this true or is this bullshit? No, it's real. He, she like Noah Cyrus didn't go to their wedding. Wait, scroll up. Who's that in the middle? That's, that's Noah, Noah Cyrus. Cyrus. They picked the worst photo of her that has probably ever been taken. They they did. Do that's that so mean. So mean. This is my first time seeing Mrs. Cyrus. Let me see. Oh yeah, she looks exactly like uh Miles. Miles. She was just on. Uh, the Call Her Daddy podcast talking about him. Who? Mrs. Cyrus? Yes. That's them. Um, I guess they dated... Um, she looks like she's been on Ozempic her entire life. Yeah, probably. So that's a better picture. Yeah, she has eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a... In the first one, she looks like a Harkonnen from Dune 2. <laughs> Scroll up. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Yeah, she looks. She looks like that's a Benet Jezere. The Benet Jezere. Yeah. God, dude, I can't. I, I can't, can't get. I can't get over Dune Two. 
Have like, you seen just Dune? just one of the best movies I've ever seen. It really is so fucking. You know what's great is uh, Jeremy Johns, my YouTube uh, review you, guy. YT guy. He was like, you know how great this is. Just now for the next, we'll probably get a few more of these. So every couple of years we just get a banger fucking Dune movie. Because <laughs> Villanueva or whatever yeah. is going to direct the third one. Right. So, but then he's probably done after that. But I bet we could squeeze out a fourth nasty one. Mm, I don't want a fourth one though. I but want the, this trilogy. I want it to be like the Batman trilogy. It's like contained. I don't want them to keep milking the IP. Sorry. Okay. This. I didn't mean like specifically based on this Dune thing. I mean like now that this Dune trilogy is gonna be so successful. Oh, Hollywood will take risk on other IP. Is that what you mean? I just meant like there's a whole other. I've been getting into the Dune lore. Yeah. And Paul Atreides' son. What? No spoilers. I won't. No. That the fact that he even has a son. That's a spoiler. To me. What do you What do you think? He's not gonna fuck. I don't know. I He's gonna it. fuck. Dude. All right. No. 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 No more. No more. No more spoilers. But oh boy. No, I know. Well, apparently, apparently, Dune the book ended there. Dune two is the ending of the book Dune. Isn't uh, that crazy? Yes, yes. That's sick. And then I think the next Dune book is a twelve year time jump, and into like Paul Atreides, you know, like going. It's just like I hope. I hope they take more risks now. Like your father did not believe in revenge. I do. Dude, if oh, they, oh, it fuck with me, boy. Huh? If they can make, if they do right by Red Rising, oh. it'll because I, I believe I believe rumor Amazon has the rights and they're making it. It'll be the it'll be like the next Game of Thrones show. Yes, yes, it will. Reading, but they need to sink in a bigger budget than they sunk into Shogun. Oh, dude, uh, I saw this. Thing. It was a list of all movies made recently that have a that had a higher budget than Dune Two. Dog shit, pieces of dog shit. I don't get it. She Hulk. How? No. Yep. By a by a wide margin too. I I was looking when I was watching Dune Two. I, did we talk? I said this earlier. Like I just couldn't believe we've gotten to this point in human history where we can make something like this. So fucking good, dude. And like Jerry was saying, like. This this medium has been around a hundred years, and now we have Dune two. I it looks it looks real. I've never left a theater being that happy about what I just watched. Yeah, I don't even care that I'm overhyping it for some people, and they're going to be underwhelmed. I don't care. It was overhyped for me, and it was I. It still fucking blew me away. Fucking hit so hard, dude. The fucking we'll go see it in IMAX. Yeah, may thy knife chip and shatter. That was pretty sweet. Fuck. Fuck, I love Dune 2, dude. It's so good. It's so good. It made me sad. I was like, I'm never going to be a part of something like this. I was what like, do you mean? hey, don't say that. No, like, it. well, no, that's like a once. A, it was like, movies are so cool. Like, that is like one of the biggest budget, mo- biggest like successes ever made, I feel like, in a theater. Like, that movie's going to make like, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars i hope it does it will i mean it already has i think and it's just like i just want to be there i want to be on set and be like looks good to me and that's all and then I'm, i can say that i was part of it oh uh, yeah can you imagine just be like yeah i was like like uh the guy that was in uh moral compass james desmalchian yeah yeah he's in the first one yeah so sick he's great in it too yeah he is yeah oh it's so good i think people dude I, I'm I'm probably be talking about Dune next episode too, man. I will too. I'm gonna every episode. I'm gonna say, "Fuck!" I keep thinking about Dune. I ruined uh, the entire story. I looked up every th- every single thing that happens in Dune. Yeah, I don't want to know that. Yeah, I don't want to know. I I, uh, I I I couldn't help myself. Yeah, I'm good. It's fucking awesome. I know. I'm like confused because I've never seen. It. I have no idea what it's about. You should watch it. Uh, watch, okay. Mm. I'm just, it's just not my type. Of, yeah, I was going to say, it's not your type of movie. Like anything with like. Did you like the Batman movies? No. Have you seen them? See, you, you I. Emily, I, I, I think, think you're just not, yeah, you're just not exposing yourself. I've to tried, me. I've like tried to like watch movies like that and I can't follow, like there's just too much action happening. Okay. No, no. Dune 1, just. Do yourself a favor. You it's gotta, hard. I know it just is. To, to watch something that has no sense of like realness. Can I it. suggest something? Yes, you may. 
one thing that I've been really bad about the last two years is that I'll watch movies or TV shows and I'll have my phone on me and I'll just check every 10 minutes. That's enough to pull me out of the movie. One of the, what, what I've been doing is I, I brick my phone and I put it away and you get so absorbed in the movie and then you stop thinking about real life and you get to immerse and it's very relaxing and therapeutic. And then you get to really sink into the movie. I'd recommend you do that for some movies that we I could can give you. I could potentially do that. I think I just would it's still hard. have trouble following. Um, no. Like, I, I, I just like the constant, like, like, it's just, I feel like they're all so similar in that, like, they're just like, oh my God, like, I have to go chase this guy. And then you're right. like this, you're this, right. this, and then Emily, they're you're flying right. they on the are, wall. And then it's like. They are all similar. Dune is not one of those movies. What though. is it about? Um, it is about these, uh, it's about this planet Dune. It's a big desert planet. And they have this thing called spice on the planet. The planet is covered in spice. It's like sand. And the spice is a hallucinogenic ritual drug for the people that live on the planet. But it's also fuel for spaceships. So all these different families want to take control of the planet. Because when you control the fuel, you control the universe. um, Because you have all the power. And so it's essentially an uprising of the locals on the planet that are being taken advantage of by all these different um, sci-fi families um so it's a thing it's almost like a slave uprising movie yeah it's twenty thousand years in the future and it's the universe is run by different uh royal families pretty much like game of thronesy a little bit but this is before that was ever written and uh it's just you know timmy timothy chalamet has got a huge family aaron butler is the nephew uh or austin butler is the nephew of the big evil family it's just Family space shit. It's fucking in. I like hate the, myself for not even finding that appealing at all. Well, then, okay, but then don't watch Dune. You you can still watch like like the Batman movies. Those are awesome. You should watch those. But they're not like. I hate all Marvel movies. I hate all superhero movies. They're so uninteresting to me. The Batman movies are like an exception because the guy that made them, Christopher Nolan, DC. made the Batman movies. He made Oppenheimer. Um, you know, he made like Inception, he made Interstellar, like he's like a very, he's a renowned director. Like he really, really made these stories, like not about like being a superhero. It's like about, it's, it's about like real, problems. it's actually about real problems. Yeah. Whereas like the other Marvel movies are like pump up the budget with CGI, like cool fight scenes. Like the Batman movies are sick because okay, they're not, they're not about that. I will watch them. Like there are no other superhero movies like the Batman movies because Christopher Nolan did it. Okay. Fair enough. Also, George Luca- Lucas ripped everything off in Dune for Star Wars. Everything. No, George Lucas ripped everything off from the Vietnam War and from like samurai culture. Dude, so much from Dune. Yeah, but every, mostly from Dune. Okay, but that's like saying like Tyler made this point earlier. That's like saying um, the Matrix ripped off Dune. It's like every story has like the same archetypes of characters and hero's journey. But like I'm saying, uh, they specifically ripped off like costume, the eye coloring thing. Whose costume? Just j- in general, the costumes in Dune are so similar to the fucking like Anakin Skywalker's fit and all that shit. Uh, like the robes and the hoods, like Tatooine being a desert planet, and there's literally a sandworm in fucking Star Wars. Remember that? There's quite literally the same exact sandworm in Star Wars that there is in Dune. Uh, look up, look up Star Wars sandworm. No, I, I, I understand the Sarlacc pit, but... How the S- Sith's eyes turn yellow. So much different shit. I would say there are similarities, but I, I doubt George Lucas read Dune and was like, this is mine now. No, but I, I I think he just read Dune and was like, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm going to write, uh, when I write my own thing, I'm going to take this, 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 and this, and this, and this. Maybe, I don't know. Look up Star Wars, um, Star Wars and Dune. Why Star Wars movies shouldn't exist without Dune. Okay, yeah. Everything Star Wars took from Dune. You, I will say this. You can, you can obviously say this, but I'm wondering if George Lucas has said anything about it. He doesn't have to. No, he, but he, he's honest about that. Like, like he showed exactly where Darth Vader came from. It's like a yeah. I'm not even. I'm not even specifically talking about like Darth Vader and like the the 
lightsabers and shit. I'm just saying. I know. Like, I'm saying that go, George Lucas is open about where he took things from and what it what it is inspired from. Yeah, I definitely like. There's, I guarantee he has to like have a statement saying he took a ton of shit from Dune. Yeah. Uh, you want to go through these only? Mm. We'll get all the Dune two talk out of here, but we we'll get it all out in this episode. But it, it'll be back. Mm. Yeah. We'll be back. Oh, just some quick homework. This this will be for everyone here if you want. Before next episode, watch the Seven Five documentary. It's, oh, that's what you were telling me about. We got to talk about it. It's it's. If you want to listen along, we're gonna talk about it next week probably the Seven Five documentary. We got to pitch it. It's a documentary following two of the most corrupt cops in uh, the in New York City's police department's history. It took place early nineties, and it is. Extremely entertaining, wildly illuminating, and hilarious. Are the is it about the guys from Black Mass with Johnny Depp? No, no, no. that's about uh, uh, Whitey Bulger in Boston. This is about the cops. I, I thought he was a cop. I've never seen it. I've only seen the trailer where he goes, "What's the secret recipe?" You don't know a lot about Whitey Bulger. No, but I, I know the trailer very well. Where he goes, "You shouldn't have given me the recipe. You gave it up just like that." Uh, I love that scene. It's I love that genuinely. Movie. I love that movie. I think that was one of the best trailers I've ever seen. You know who's great in that is fucking uh, Harbor, Har- Har- Harbor, Dave Har- D- David Harbor. Was gonna say uh, Jesse Plemons. Ah, all right. Thanks for listening. Um, thanks. To shout out to Jerry. Go listen to uh, his podcast, Defcon Five. Defcon Five. He's uh, he's a hidden gem here. He really is. One of the most underpaid fellas here, I would say. I have no idea how much he makes. I don't know how much he makes, but I but guarantee it's, it's not under enough. it's not enough. Love you, Jer. Love you, Jer Bear.